We're ready. Good morning. Today is April 5th, 2019. Welcome to Dryden Wire Live. This morning we are being joined in studio by our very special guest, Spooner Area District Superintendent, Dr. David Aslan. 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 <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. This is going well. <laughs> hey, I've been called way worse <laughs> names than that before. And pardon my green <laughs> shirt that melds into the, wa- the background wall. But, uh, my name is Mrs. Doogood, and I've always... Wait a minute here. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you didn't go, want to get ahead, ahead of no, time. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Mrs. Doogood, and I've always... As always, I'm joined by my handsome, charming, and favorite son, Ben. That's me. Boy, I can see why you didn't want me to read it. I wrote this, by the way. Uh, a doc- Next Friday, we will be joined by, ooh, Dr. Aslan's Aslan. Ar- Aslan, arch nemesis, <laughs> <laughs> Shell Lake Superintendent, uh, Mr. David Bridenhagen. Well, is he your nemesis? Sure. Uh, <laughs> no, he's not my nemesis. He's a, he's a great guy. Yeah, so. I like him. Uh, it is if it's Friday, it's Dryden Wire live, and we welcome everybody. Well, it was rough. Uh, well, I that can see rough. why you didn't let me do it or read first. <laughs> I get my names right anyway. <laughs> oh, okay, wow, that's so cool. that's Dave, cool. thank you so very much for joining us. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. So, before we get into some referendum stuff, um, uh, this would be you're coming up on your second year that you have been at the Spooner Area School District, right? That's correct. So how's it going? It's going well so far, Ben. Okay. Now this is the end of your second year then. So from your first year to your second year, uh, what did you learn that first year that helped you out this year? You know, it's been great to to get to know people within the district and uh, within the community. And through our strategic planning process, we've had a chance to learn more about uh, what people are looking for for their community schools, and you know, it's been good to be part of that effort to work to meet those expectations. And uh, there's spring break coming up soon, right? One more week of school, and then nice. it's spring break in the Spooner School. And then you'll be going to school, I think, for till July 6th <laughs> this year with all this with all the snow well, days. For, fortunately, we won't be uh, serving a Fourth of July picnic to students <laughs> or anything like that. So we'll be able to finish school the uh, the first part of June. Stop monkeying around. I'm trying to keep the levels down a little bit because I was told I was too loud last time. So I'm kind of adjusting everybody here. Yeah, we don't really have a script. No. <laughs> well, it's okay. It's, it's, it's no fun. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't know much about you other than who you are and how and the job you've done here at Spooner School District. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your previous uh How'd you get here? Sure thing, and yeah. Educational background, that kind of stuff. Yep. You're obviously a doctor. Uh, in what is in what uh, brain, degree? Brain surgery. Sure, brain surgery. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, mm-hmm. so I my school administrator career started way back in 1995. So I've been a school administrator for a long time. Wow. Had the chance to be a elementary, middle, and high school principal, and uh, then moved on to the superintendency. I came to the Spooner School District <clears throat> and the community. Uh, from the Bayfield School District in Bayfield, oh, okay. Wisconsin. So I'm one of the few people that make their home in Spooner that moved south to move to Spooner. <laughs> You're not one of the ones that came from down south. I did not come You're from not down a southern south. Boy. No, I came from up north actually. <laughs> so yep. So I've been enjoying my time here in Spooner. Uh, background wise, you know, I was a I was a teacher and a coach and an athletic director. Moved on to the principalship. I uh, had a chance to complete a couple graduate programs in the principalship and superintendency. And yeah, um, so I am a doctor. I can't help you out with prescriptions <laughs> or treating any illnesses or anything like that. But earned a doctor in uh, educational leadership. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah. Job. Right. And okay. has that been uh, helpful? It's been very helpful. Yes. So we should all go get one? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, it's not for the faint of heart, but it was a good experience. That's what I can say, Ben. Are you, are you still paying on those loans, by the way? I am, <laughs> yes. All right. Yes, low monthly payments. <laughs> yep. Okay, so I want to get into a little bit about the referendum. So I purposely didn't look up a lot of the information or anything that's been reported yet because I kind of wanted to learn at the same time as everyone else. Um, so what is actually being proposed? So great question. So, uh, you know, we've been fortunate to have uh, first rate maintenance staff that have really worked hard to keep our buildings up. And Terry, I'm, I'm losing sound in my headphones here, by the way. Uh, 
Hang on, Matt. There we go. Yep. Got it? I'm I'm back, everybody. Yeah. yeah. So 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 our buildings, our facilities are really well maintained, and that's something I think the community can be proud of. Back in 2016, the district uh, commissioned a comprehensive facility study, and that study indicated that there were some pretty significant infrastructure needs that each of the buildings had. And, you know, when you consider school buildings, you really need to think of it like your own home. Uh, you know, just the day in, day out mm -hmm. use, sure. the wear and tear that comes with it, it means that things need to be repaired, replaced and upgraded. And that's the case here. So we have, you know, we have things like climate control that really need to be addressed. I think if you were to talk to any eighth grader at Spooner Middle School or any eighth grade <laughs> teacher, you'd say, uh, they'd tell you that they have classrooms that the temperatures are in the 80s in the dead of winter and classrooms that are in the 50s. So we have some pretty significant needs. Right, back up a minute. The yes. middle school is your oldest facility? It is our is oldest correct, facility, right? yep. Okay. Portions built in 1940, yeah. 1963, and 1990 in the Anthol's gym in 1956. So, okay. uh, you know, lots of construction on that facility. Uh, so, so some needs for infrastructure upgrades, uh, some needs for fixed upgrades, flooring, sinks, heaters, windows, things of that nature. And we're also, we're in a different day and time as we look at schools in the, in the context of <clears throat> safety. So we've been able to do a number of small projects in each of the buildings through the state safety right. grants that have been made available. But we have some larger scale projects that would certainly uh, upgrade the safety posture in each of the district's buildings. And uh, so those are the pieces that we're, we're talking about at this point. Okay. And I'm sorry, we're going to Most of the, your referendum is basically concentrating on the middle school area then, is that correct? Actually, it'd be, it, it would be all the buildings all that buildings. we'd look okay. at, at some work it's being done. Specifically yep. for the safety aspect for all buildings, I've been thinking maybe, huh? So, but, but some infrastructure things as well. You know, okay. it's, it's kind of okay. interesting. Uh, so uh, we talked a little bit about when the Spooner Middle School was built. Yeah. Uh, the Spooner Elementary School was built in 1986. So it's, wow. you know, it's well over that's, 30 years old that's already. That's I thought it was. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, when you look at the lifespan of a new school building, typically you plan for about 50 years. So, so it's, you know, it's pretty deep into that time period. Uh, Spooner High School, the newest facility built in, in 2009. So even at that, that's 10 years old and oh. there are some pieces that need to be upgraded. So why a referendum? Obviously, uh, you need money, but what for a lot of people who don't know, for other people that is, not me, uh, <laughs> what is a referendum? Usually, I think when people hear referendum, they don't think, yay. Yes, right. <laughs> Good question. And, and uh, so a referendum is, a, is an official vote. And in that, you know, it's an issue that's put directly to the voters, to the electorate, usually framed up as a yes or no question. And a referendum is usually connected with a larger election. So a primary election or a general election like sure. we had earlier this week. Mm -hmm. And when would this be, this re referendum be uh, up for election? So as we go through this process and, and, you know, the board will have some decision points they'll reach along the way. But, but if there were to be a referendum in Spooner, we would be looking at the April 2020 general election. April, okay, so a year. Okay, so about a year about to a the year. week. Wow. Yes. So from now until then, what's the process? So uh, a, a lot of moving parts to this process right now. Uh, beginning next week, we will have a referendum facilities committee, and that's mm. made up of community members, okay, of teachers and support staff, and we have student representation and school board representation on that. Uh, that group's got some some pretty important jobs that they'll work on. Uh, first of all, they will be learning about school finance and the, the mm -hmm. tax impact in Spooner of what uh, various dollar values of projects might look like. Uh, second piece, they'll, they will closely examine the buildings and take a look at the needs in each of the buildings. In the end, the most important work of that committee will be generating recommendations for the school board to consider as to possible referendum projects, the highest priority ones. Sure. 
Okay. Yes. That committee has already been selected? That committee's okay. been selected, right. and uh, I want to encourage everybody out there to consider attending a meeting. There are open meetings. The oh. first one is next Thursday, April 11th, 5 p.m. in the Spooner High School Media Center. Uh, if you're unable to attend, the, uh, we will be recording all the movie, uh, all the uh, meetings, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll be available on the district website to view as well. Okay. That is nice because some people that can't make it want to be informed. Yeah. And and what's the most dangerous part of referendums are, are the misinformed. or And that's why one reason you're here today is so we can inform people what the truth of the matter is. And that, that is for sure. And, and uh, we really are committed to being transparent yeah. and providing the information Good. that's that the citizens would need to make an informed decision mm -hmm. at the ballot box should this go to referendum. Sure. So the committee will meet next week. And then at some point, do you, do, is there an expectation of when they will be presenting what they have found? Yep. The committee will meet twice a month in April and May and June. They'll be issuing their recommendations to the school board in June. After that, uh, the school board will have to consider those recommendations that come forward. Uh, the next major step in the process would be in the fall, right as school starts, okay. where the if the board elects to move forward with this process, we would do a comprehensive community survey. And in that, we would be trying to gauge what the level of community support would be for various projects. And, and within that, then we would provide opportunities for citizens to get in and see the facilities, to learn more about referendum project ideas, and most important, get their questions answered. And then the, uh, you know, the, the piece that will really be the determining factor in terms of a referendum or not would then come in January of 2020. At that point, the board would have to uh, declare their intent to do a referendum and how much they would look for and what the exact purpose of the referendum would be. Your, your fiscal year for budget process is when? Is it, uh, it starts on July 1st. Okay, it's July 1st. Yes. It's just like the states. Um, is that, a, is that a consideration here in the referendum, before referendum? Do you need to consider that this year in the budget process or wait till the following year? Uh, wait till the following, following year. year. Uh, but, but you know, I, I appreciate you bringing that up because mm -hmm. uh, for next year, we will have produced the first balance budget in about the t last decade here in the Spoon hey. Area School District. Wow. So, and that's taken a lot of hard work and sacrifice <laughs> by staff and community and school board members, but we're there. So, you know, as we talk about referendum, uh, you know, it's important to note what we're not asking for. We're not asking for money or we would not be asking for money for staff raises right. or for curriculum or for extra cur curriculars or anything like that because we work very hard and we're addressing that within our, our regular budget. So no new staff members, no matter what the area, no, no new class sizes or anything. Just basically building, it, the buildings themselves need need work. Right. We're looking uh, at capital projects to upgrade infrastructure and safety. Okay. Now, when you're talking about that survey in the fall, um, would there be multiple options, that comprehensive survey of uh, this amount? Is it like an a la carte? You can vote for this one or this one or mm -hmm. this one, or is it just we're voting mm -hmm. for this and everything in it or no nothing in it yeah it, it would be multiple pieces within it and and the intent is to gauge what people would be supportive of okay and then you said in january 2020 uh the board will then have to decide with it so can they decide to move forward without uh or if that survey came back with most people saying nah, i don't really don't want to or if it's a 50 50 do are they the ultimately the ones that decide to do it? Uh, the board is ultimately the the body that will decide whether a referendum will go for it. Uh, referenda that have done been done in in recent history, the, you know, it's uh, there's pretty good data out there that says what the community survey yields is what most school right. boards will put out in terms sure. of a referendum yeah. question. Well, let's get to the big question: How are you going to pay for it? Well, that's a that's a great question, and that that seems to be the one that's, that's the in the front of, of of everybody's minds. So, um, you know, school districts go to referendum because when you look at large projects, there uh, there are revenue limits as to what schools can yep. raise for revenue, and uh, the cost of those projects typically exceeds what a district can handle in its regular budget. So, it, you know, as we take a look at it, uh, you know, I will 
I will give you some figures right. and for those that are listening and viewing, please know out. they're for planning yeah. estimates only. <laughs> but uh, but as as we, you know, I'll give you some information kind of at three different levels. Uh, at six million dollars, uh, you know, we would have we would have projects that uh, uh, would enhance the the all the buildings and enhance safety. Uh, the interesting piece is because of the way we would structure the financing and. Uh, typically 20-year financing on school projects, uh, no uh, no increase to the district's mill rate. So at uh, well, six, are six, like that. six million dollars, I, 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 I would hope that they would. I, I think that, uh, you know, that, that we're in a u- unique position here. Where we're able to do that because that's usually not the case. Uh, and nine million dollars, if you were uh, to do this on a $150,000 house, uh, you'd look at about sixteen dollars and fifty cents a year increase of your tax, so about a dollar and thirty eight cents. So the difference is a six million won't cost you anything, but if we go to the big one, the nine million, it will cost the taxpayers in the district some. It'll it will cost them some money at twelve million dollars. Yeah. Again, on that one hundred and fifty thousand dollar home, we'd look yeah. at about thirty three dollars a year. Okay. So so that that gives some just really general planning figures to consider, but uh, that's the impact. Um, there are some pretty important considerations as we take a look at why now is the time that we're looking at it. You know, the first I talked about a little bit, we have really worked hard to get our financial house in order in the district. I think you inherited kind of a mess, didn't you, when you uh, came in? It, it, well, not a mess. I guess that's the wrong word. It, it was a work in progress, <laughs> yeah. and a lot of people have worked yeah, very yeah. hard <laughs> and made sacrifices. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. we had employees that went – four years or more without raises and and things of that nature. And we've just, we've been able to chip away at that. And so we think that we do have our house in order. Uh, The second piece is interest rates are about as low as they will be for the foreseeable future. So uh, that creates a window opportunity that's important because higher interest rates would mean more cost involved Mm -hmm. with paying back money that would be borrowed for these projects. The last piece is uh, also an important one, and that is for at least the last handful of years, the cost of construction, so when you consider Mm -hmm. labor and materials, has gone up at least 10% a year. So sometimes we say a good idea today will be a good idea tomorrow. That may not be the case here. Three or four years down the line, the cost of the projects may be just more than the than we would be able to afford. So three oh. big pieces there. And the other component to that is people don't realize how much it affects these kind of uh, construction projects is tariffs. Uh, tariffs of steel is going yes. up. Uh, so steel is going to go up. Uh, and I don't know what other tariffs are out there that's going to affect it, but that is a, a component where people don't understand. Absolutely. And that's definitely been part of our consideration yeah. as we put this together. You had mentioned earlier, uh, you talked about mill rate. I've yes. heard that um, for our viewers. Um, what is that? So, yeah, another piece of jargon. So thanks for the opportunity to explain that. So uh, a mill rate is the amount of taxed assessed per thousand dollars of property value. Okay. Yep. So, and that's, uh, that's what, what a person's property tax is based out of. And when you look at property tax, you look at county tax, you look mm-hmm. at city or town tax, mm-hmm. you look at school district tax, mm-hmm. and here in our area, also WITC tax. It, as we look at ours, we're, uh, we're about $9.57 per thousand. Yeah. Another question that's probably not answerable at this time, but Governor Eber's uh, proposal for school district is up, uh, you know, additional money. Uh, that's not set in stone yet, of course. That's going to be a whole new issue down in the state of Madison when they try to go through the budget process. Any idea, or have you folks been, the superintendents had meetings to discuss what the potential benefit of his budget proposal is to the school district, and will this help this project? I, I'm glad that you asked that question because uh, in Spooner, we are watching the progress I of bet. the budget proposal very closely. Uh, Sp- The current educational funding formula, and it's been in place since 1993, believe it or not, um, 
penalizes school districts like Spooner that have a high property value. And we have over $1.6 billion worth of property in our district. But yet, but a student enrollment that is either saying, staying the same or declining over time. And we're down about 25% student-wise in the past 20 years. Mm -hmm. So what happens is we see... Uh, we see an annual decline in our aid under this current formula. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, uh, we currently receive less than 50% of the aid per student than we did just five years ago oh from my. the state. And what kind of money are we talking? Well, uh, I'm going to give you kind of an interesting comparison here, Ben. Uh, right now in the Spooner Area School District, when we look at equalized aid, so that's the general aid that the state gives all schools for students, mm -hmm. uh, we are less than $350 per student for this current school year. And I would contrast that with the voucher schools that uh, mm -hmm. continue to grow in our state. And at this point, uh, a middle school or high school voucher student brings about $8,300 oh. of aid a year. So it's a real reflection on uh the short end of the stick that children and Spooner are getting. So, what is the uh, a good number there? I mean, obviously, the higher the better. But if we're sure. three fifty now, yep. So, uh, are we like a thousand is kind of boy. That would be ideal, it, or you know, uh, even a, even a thousand dollars. And and when Governor Evers was state superintendent, Evers yeah. he he had proposed that a couple of times. I remember that? Even that figure would mean. A thousand dollars would mean almost uh, an additional million dollars of revenue coming into this the mm. school district. All told, if all the pieces of Governor Evers' budget proposal became law, and it's unlikely that they will, if you've watched the news, there's a lot of discussion in Madison, but it would increase uh, state revenue to the district by about 24%. So very, very significant and certainly would have an impact on the scope of these projects. Now, the formula you said has been around since 1993. Yes. Why has that not been addressed? Well, it, it's, uh, you know, it's a piece that uh, certainly is part of the the political process. So, uh, and, and in it, there are districts that benefit from it. Some of our neighboring districts benefit from it. But when, you know, the two big pieces of it are property value within your district and the amount of students that you have and whether that enrollment is growing, staying the same, or getting smaller. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, there's a growing body of districts just like Spooner that have high property value that, uh, you know, as northern Wisconsin in general gets a smaller population mm -hmm. over time. Uh, fewer students, and uh, those districts are penalized by the current formula. Is it possible, instead of doing a referendum, to just take a loan? Uh, really good question. So uh, the answer to that is no. Nice. Uh, school school districts are only able to borrow not, not a significant amount of money. Yeah, so so the scope of the projects that we take a look at would require us to, to go out to referendum. Uh, as you know, they'd be larger than we can handle in our budget. More than our cash reserves are, are on hand and well beyond what we're able to borrow without going to referendum. Then you said you're gonna the, the budget will be uh, uh, squared, right? Pretty uh, soon. That's what we anticipate that we're gonna produce a balanced budget, and we will uh, be asking the school board to adopt a preliminary budget at their April fifteenth regular school board meeting. <clears throat> so very soon, yes. So then, uh, when it is balanced. That money, I'm assuming, then is going for, ideally, if this referendum goes through, that, that also helps, or that's not how it works? Uh, well, it, it helps in the you know in the sense that uh, we just go to referendum for money for capital projects. Sure. As you saw here this past week, some of the neighboring districts went to referendum for operating money as well. Right. And, uh, you know, we are fortunate to be in a position where we do not need to consider that at this time. Do you have high hopes for this? I, I'm optimistic. I think it's a it's a great opportunity right now. I, I think the time is right to upgrade these buildings to make them the best possible places for good teaching and learning to take place, to make them, uh, you know, to make them be even greater community assets they are, and make them safe places for everybody as well. Well, I think we can all get behind that one. I, I mean, I, the, 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 the infrastructure, of course, is important, right? Yes. But boy, safety, I mean, that's just where it's at, right? We are just in a different day in society, yeah. in a different day in schools, and we need to double down to make sure our schools are as safe as they can be. 
What kind of feedback have you been receiving already? So, you know, not a lot of formal feedback. I, I think that any time that you're talking millions of dollars, uh, that, that, that raises concerns with people as they look at their what will happen with their tax bill. Uh, because Spooner, uh, you know, gets the short end of the stick on the state funding formula, you know, our local taxpayers are paying about 67 cents on every dollar of what it costs to provide education for the community's children. So they are sh- shouldering a heavy load, and, and we certainly are aware of that and, and that that's a consideration. So we really think that, uh, you know, the scope of the projects that we'll consider will be things that uh, won't have a significant impact on, on uh, taxes as we look into the future. Sure. And what would happen, do you think, if uh, this doesn't go through uh, for a referendum? If it if, if either it doesn't get presented as one or uh, so it gets nixed right away or it does go to the vote and it is no. Sure. Well, and, and you know, a- any of those scenarios are certainly possibilities. You know, uh, as I said earlier, we're fortunate to have a very dedicated maintenance staff that work hard to, to keep our buildings up and that'll continue. Uh <clears throat> Within that, we would prioritize projects and we would chip away at them as we're able to afford them over time. Uh, At this point, we've received the maximum amount of safety grant money we can get from the state. So I was just going to ask you about that because I know when A.G. Schimmel was in office and all the shootings were going on in the school districts, um, and I don't know how much money. I remember as sheriff, I wrote a lot of letters supporting all the school districts for their different at the different steps of their of applications for the grant money, and you've you've utilized that money. Though, we have, so there's nothing else. Maxed there. out all the okay. money that was available yeah. to us. So, Good for you. So and I'm like, glad you did. <laughs> yep. So we we'd pick away at at those projects as we're we're able. Yeah. Obviously, that would greatly extend the timeline for project completion. Is, is you know we'd pay a little bit as we could go. That that's what it would mean. What are the misconceptions that you believe? Um, there are with this referendum, or maybe just any referendum, I suppose. Sure. Yeah. You know, I, th- I think that uh, some people that don't have a direct connection with the school, that may not have a child or a grandchild in, or just not have reason to be in the schools very often, a uh, uh, case in point would be our elementary school. It was built in 1986. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's well over 30 years old, but there are people that think, well, that's a pretty new building. We shouldn't have to be doing anything with that yet. Even Spooner High School at just 10 years old, <laughs> ah, you know, things wear out and there's there's things that we need to look at. And again, you could talk to Spooner High School students and teachers that that'll tell you, Boy, in the dead of January, we were in classrooms that were 51 degrees Boy. for days on end. So, wow. you know, I, I think that that's a piece of it. Um, you know, the other is just uh, that, uh, you know, that any projects that would be part of a referendum are going to shoot taxes through the roof. And in some cases, people are saying, I just can't af- afford to do that. And uh, you know, I just want people to know that uh, that we're aware of that. Well, and, going uh, back to what you had said earlier, if it was a $12 million on a $150,000 home, that's $33 a year. Yes. So what is that, like a buck yeah. fifty a month? Yeah, it's uh, $2.75 oh. a month. So it was way off. Oh so yeah. Do you know by? I chance, went to Shell Lake School, by the way. Do you know by chance in your in your district? And yeah. I just thought of this, and I don't know if it's even. I'm sure somebody has this data somewhere. What is the average homeowner's um, the average hundred, value of a home? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Any idea? I you know I couldn't speak okay, to that. I, I, I just, just know curious. the total just, value is about one point six four okay. billion dollars okay. in our All school right. district. This so is curious. I just wonder. I just wonder what that was. It gives you a better idea. No. Oh, okay. That See, would be I, I, do the seniors have a lot of, I mean, the seniors, obviously, a lot of them are on fixed incomes. Those are the folks that you're going to have to sell on this. Some of the folks. Anyway. Oh, I didn't yes. think about that. Because they are on fixed incomes and they're going to say, uh, a lot of them will tell me or say that, you know, my kids went through the Spooner School District. Uh, my grandkids are supposed to, I feel I should pay my share. Others say, hey, I don't think I should be paying for somebody else's kid's yeah. education. And I, I, don't like that agreement or that argument, but it, there is an argument out there that will come forward. Yep. Well, well, and that even at the highest amount, even if it was only two seventy five, yeah. that's a gallon of milk. Actually, I don't know what yeah. a gallon of milk is. My wife o- does the shopping over so. three, I think. Well, it'll be about uh, that. <laughs> yeah, it 
it, you know, there's certainly, there certainly are people that are on a fixed income and, and are just very, very sensitive to sure. any increase in taxes. Uh, the public school is such that, uh, you know, anyone who's been a consumer of public schools, somebody paid for that experience right. at some point. And that's, yeah. that's the way our educational system is set up here in the United States. Yeah. Uh, it is, uh, it's not an inexpensive endeavor. It's one of the two largest expenditures in our state. Um, but as I say, uh, looking at school buildings are like looking at your house. The day in, day out wear and tear means that things need to be repaired yeah. and upgraded. And you know, despite the great efforts to keep things maintained, mm -hmm. there are things that, that need to be replaced. So, yeah, we're not talking about just mom and dad and, and two kids uh, in your house. You have a few more kids at your house. Imagine if you had uh, three or four hundred children in and out of the house. Yes, yes on a day to day basis. Yeah, that's after a lot of wear and tear. Ten to thirty years. Yeah, I yes. kind of see why we need, we need to kind of update some things. Yes, absolutely. But so. I, I think number one, it has to start with safety. It just does. Obviously, the infrastructure is important as well. But goodness gracious, I think we can all get behind safety. Absolutely. So, and and you know, it's things that uh, when these facilities were built, just weren't considerations like having at least two layers of doors to get into a building, uh, blast resistance laminate over large pieces of, yeah, of windows, window. uh, yeah. things of that nature. Uh, boy, if you're uh, a parent dropping a child off or picking a child up at the, at the Spooner Middle School or Spooner Elementary School, we need to do some work on our parking facilities and how we route traffic to keep everybody safe. So those are things that have just changed over time, and it's time to address those issues. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that was not a topic. Even just 10 years ago, that was not a topic. Uh, yes. How much uh, – it's interesting how much has changed in just 10, 15 years. But definitely so. It, it, uh, and as it changes in schools, it also changes in our society. We're just more aware of trying to keep people safe. Yeah, here. and we certainly don't, I don't, I don't think, want a situation where, uh, God forbid, something bad happens and we had said no to a referendum that could have updated. Now, that's not, a, I'm not trying to, you know, scare tactic here. I'm just saying, boy, I would feel pretty, pretty bad. Uh, that would be incredibly unfortunate. Mm. What other pieces are we missing here? What's the other, uh, 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 either misconceptions or things that you've heard that you wanted to address that we haven't already? Well, you know, there there are a few different pieces that are interesting to touch on. So as we look at the Spooner Middle School, a couple pieces there that I think people might find interesting. Uh, there's a small gym mm -hmm. on the east side of the Spooner Middle School, and it was built in 1940. It's been condemned for the last handful of years, so <clears> it's not able to use for instructional space. And if you've walked around the outside of that building, you can see pieces of concrete. Yeah, you want to wear a hard there. hat if you're walking yep. around. Yeah. So, so, so that's <laughs> going to need to come down. And there's a lot of discussion and insights about whether something would go up there and what it might be. So mm -hmm. it might be some opportunities for uh, some 21st century learning spaces, things like maker spaces or fab labs. Oh, just, nice. just an example that we don't currently provide for students <clears throat> or community use here in Spooner. So that's one. Uh, another interesting one is the Anthol's Gym. So that was built in 1956. And boy, those that have been in Spooner for a long time or, or are from the region, you know, that used to seat over 2,000 people yeah. at sectional games. Well, you know, we it's a good opportunity as we look at these projects to not have to invest a ton of money to upgrade that Anthol's gym and make that a second competition gym mm -hmm. in our district. And we have a real need as the district and also a real demand for the community. So those are a couple pieces that I think are unique to this oh. and might really provide some opportunities to make our – Make our schools be even greater resources in our community. Uh, you said you may have to tear down that 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 gym, right? Yes. Uh, you're probably gonna have to get one of those bulldozers. What's the thing with the swingy arm that the ball? What is oh, that? A wrecking ball. Yeah, is that what it, yeah. <laughs> if you're looking for anyone to, uh, to operate that, yeah. I'd be happy to come in on the weekend. Or if it, we can't actually sanction it. Uh, uh -huh. If someone just leaves the keys in, I'm only like three blocks away from there. I'll keep that. In mind, I can just swing Thanks over on a Saturday that. night. And you don't have to pay us. <laughs> nope, not a dime. Yeah, I'll pay you, you, actually. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that offer. We'll keep that in mind yeah. as we go forward. Oh, yeah, such yeah. a political answer. Yes, yes. Well, it, it uh, you know, in all seriousness, uh, something does need to happen with that. It is condemned. It is not able to be inhabited or used for any purpose at all. So, mm. but, uh, you know, when, when, uh, 
when you face situations like that, it creates opportunity for good things in the future. I am really surprised if it's that that bit, and I agree with it. I've been in that little gym for a lot, a lot of years. Um, the liability's got to be pretty high if you're if you got a structure there that is unusable, basically liable liability to the taxpayers of your district. Uh, you have it cordoned off or something? Or, it uh, it is cordoned off, and it's okay. secured from the inside as okay, well. So nobody, so, get in nobody it. can get in. But there's it. still some liability. There, there certainly is some liability, and you're uh, kind of hanging out there. We are. <laughs> we certainly are. Yes, yeah. and, and uh, referendum or no referendum, that will need to be addressed at some point before too far down the line. I would think so. Um, how are the new principals? Doing so all, all three, all three new principals this year. Uh, all principals in our district are are new this year. Yes. Uh, a couple of them new to the district. Uh, Not Peter though. Yeah. So <laughs> yep. So Peter's new to the principalship. He and Michelle Cobdy at the middle school. Yeah. Everybody's working hard, and you know, it just uh, it's been a really positive year in our school district. People are really working hard together to move forward on the district's mission, and that's preparing all students for a successful yeah. future. Which principal is your favorite? Um, <laughs> you know, you know, I like them all equally, Ben. Aye. Yeah, that's, you know, I'm a father, so that's just like uh, one of your kids asking yeah. you which one do you love more. Right, huh? yeah. I like They're them gonna... equally. They're all great. Yep. Peter, <laughs> Peter's my neighbor, so I can give him a hard time. Oh, day, yeah. So. Well, okay. All right. <laughs> Okay, what else uh, did we not talk about that uh, you have written down maybe that we've missed about the referendum in the school? You know, I'd like to just talk a little bit uh, about mill rates, just to give people oh, good, a little bit I of still a perspective. Don't understand it. Yep. So, <laughs> so mill rates, the amount of tax levied per thousand dollars of property value, and when you look at all the portions of property tax, so for us, it's county tax, town or city tax. It's school district tax and it's WITC. So all those pieces go together. But as you look at the school portion of mill rates in the heart of the North Conference, these figures are kind of interesting. This is for this year, for 2018 okay. 19. Right. Spooner, as I said earlier, $9.57 per thousand. Uh, the next closest is the Bloomer School District, $10.19. And you're, you're comparing apples to apples here. Yeah. Districts that are about the same size. They're so. from our athletic conference. All right, there from you the go. Okay. Conference. I think we need to be yep. clear about that yep. because there are districts close to us that are small. Right, okay. yes. But the, the, the schools that are in the heart of the North Conference, okay. all very similar, similar size. size. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Serving similar amounts of students. Mm -hmm. uh, Chatech Warehouse are about $10.45 this year. And uh, it goes up. Uh, uh, the highest at this point is Ladysmith, thirteen dollars and eighty-one cents per thousand. Wow. So you can see, you know, Spooner Spooner's done a good job at holding the line on the levy, and uh, even within the heart of the North, you know, a small number of schools that are similar size, uh, pretty great disparity in terms of uh, tax rates. Yes, and, suck it, Ladysmith. And you did that. With your nine dollars, and you balance the budget with that, and we're, mm. we've been able that, to balance going the budget. To be. With that's that. pretty yep, good. Yep, we'll balance up for next year. <laughs> yeah, so, that's pretty good. So that you know, that's a lot of hard work and sacrifice yeah. by a lot of people to yeah. make that happen. And then you were talking before about then, because uh, this referendum, of course, is for the potential school safety and infrastructure. Um, what's on the agenda or the horizon when it comes to the staff? Is there anything yet in terms of? Um, uh, pay raises in terms of um, <clears throat> needs for their classrooms, etc. cetera. Yep. Is anything like that on the horizon? So, you know, we've been fortunate uh, this school year and as we look to next school year to provide the first broad-based raises for staff in the district. Yeah. So uh, what we've been <clears throat> able to do is, is bring our pay tables up to make us competitive for attracting and retaining staff. So you know, we hope to sustain that into the future. Um, we, we've got some good news on some other things that are uh, considerations for all staff members like health insurance that we think is going to be more affordable next year and provide better coverage. And that certainly will have an impact on, on the staff members in our district. The past couple years, we've had a couple broad-based curriculum initiatives. We, we developed curriculum and, and got resources this past year for the area of English language arts. This school year, we've been working on math curriculum. The school board recently adopted that curriculum, so we'll be working on training and resources and, and fielding those new resources as school starts. So those have been a couple large base projects that have been going on these past two school years and will continue to work into the future. So it's heading in the right direction. It's heading in the right direction. Could use a little help with our infrastructure and our school safety. 
we, um, we could. We, we, we have an opportunity to make these buildings great places for teaching and learning <laughs> and safe for all. Awesome. I know what Shell Lake is obviously, they, they passed their referendum last year, and I'm a taxpayer in the Shell Lake School District, and I, all my kids went to Shell Lake School District. And I had a tough time voting yes for that. I mean, th there were different components of that, too. Uh, do this, do that, do this for this much, and build. build. We want, I think they went to the whole gamut. Anyway, it's going to start this summer or this spring. And I, w I had a hard time voting yes for that, for the whole gambit, but I did because I had that same feeling. Ben, Ben, Matt, and Daisy all graduated from Shell Lake School District. I don't have any family anymore in the Shell Lake School District, but I'm part of that community, and I think it's part of my responsibility to help pay for future our future generation. That's the way I looked at it. Yes, I didn't like pay anymore either. Like anybody, we don't like to pay taxes. Who does? Right. But I think it's important that we know that you guys are in the Swooner School District. You're managing your money well, and you're asking for something that's needed, and and it's not some fly by night project that you have in in mind. And I think that's very important. Don't you agree? I, I would absolutely agree with you. And, you know, there's the old adage that it takes an entire village to raise a child. And that yeah. certainly is the case as we look at our yeah. community yeah. schools. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you so very much, Dave, for coming on and actually kind of walking us through uh, some of this referendum stuff. Um, maybe the uh, end of the summer or this fall, I should say, when, when you're getting ready to, um, if it does go to that comprehensive survey. To maybe have you back in and kind of walk us through what that survey is. That sounds would that great. Be interesting? Uh, that would be great. Thank you for having yeah, that'd me. Be, that'd be cool. Yeah, it would actually. be. Yep. Uh, well, you've been watching Dryden Wire Live, a live streaming video podcast presented by DrydenWire.com. For my father, Terry Dryden, I'm Ben Dryden. We want to thank today's guest, Dr. David Aslin, for stopping by. And we, of course, thank all of you for watching. Reminder, next Friday, we'll be joined by Shell Lake Superintendent, Mr. David Bridenhagen. If it's Friday, it's Dryden Wire Live.